Divine Truth, Spirit Experiences Discussions Experiences of people who have lived on Earth and who have now passed into the spirit world. The title of this personal experience from spirits is Susan feels resistance to God's definition of a loving mother, during which Mary Channel Susan, a first sphere spirit from America, who died in 1997 from breast cancer while aged in her 40s, who has anger and resentment about having helping spirits talk to her about her addictions associated with being a mother while on earth. This session was recorded on the 8th of August 2017 from 2.50 p.m. in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. All right, so our next sister that we want to talk to is Susan, and, uh, and it's about the same subject, basically what it feels like in the raw state having to do with specific emotions. Hi there. Hello, Susan. Can you give us a little bit of background about yourself, Susan? Where, sure. Where, I'm, where are you from are you on Earth? Where were you from? I'm from the United States. Yep. And I'm a mother of three and I died of breast cancer. Right. In my mid-40s. Yep. So quite young. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How long ago was that? Uh, that was... That was about 40 years ago. Yep. Yeah, which is funny because I still sort of feel the same age as I did when I passed. So you're 80, but you're actually yeah. you feel 40 still. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> and I suppose I uh, understand w a little bit about why you want to speak with me. Mm -hmm. uh, some of these things I feel like um, I feel sort of feel like I'm a little more progressed than your last person who spoke to you. And Rodney. Yes. Uh, but then as I'm coming to speak to you, I, I wonder if I am really. <laughs> You've got to be careful about judgment, don't we? Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of my... Um, well, no, I, I didn't feel judgment of Rodney. I just felt like, no, no, I've come to accept that some of what I believed on Earth are about what made me mm. right and good, I've, I can see that it's an error. But now as I start to talk to you, I realise this is a process for me and mm -hmm. I'm not really sure how much emotion I've let go of about this. So mm, I do think it's still judgment though. Okay. <laughs> Which we can... Of Rodney? Well, just um, of, of a state... Um, see, to, to my mind, when part of the reasons why people on earth don't address emotion is because there is feelings that come from people around them that, oh, that emotion should be easy to deal with, or that emotion seems to be pretty silly to me, or, you know, that emotion seems to be whatever. And, and for most men and women, in particular with men and women together, um, there is often a lot of judgment from men towards women about certain emotions that women have, and often there's a lot of judgment from women towards men about certain emotions they have. Mm. And the reason why I raise all that is which breast did you have your cancer in? Well, both in the end. Mm -hmm. Which start, where, where did it start though? In my left <clears throat> breast. Mm. So this demonstrates a preference to getting uh, emotions from women. Uh, yes, and so. so what I've been taught yep. since I passed is that um, I had a lot of feelings about being a mother when I was on earth. Mm -hmm. That was my most important thing mm -hmm. that I felt uh, that I wanted to do mm -hmm. and that made me a good person. Did I felt I put a lot of time something. into my children. Mm -hmm and especially my daughters, mm -hmm. and I felt that... Less so your sons, though. Yes, yeah, so I had two girls and a boy. Mm -hmm. Our boy was the youngest. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and I see that, although mm -hmm. I still had a lot of investment in Jeremy as well. Mm -hmm. um, so I suppose I'm in this process now over years of trying to open up emotionally to the idea that what I did as a mother wasn't good. I feel like everyone's trying to tell me I wasn't a good mother mm -hmm. when 
I felt like I lived my whole life really from when I was 12. <laughs> to be a mother. <laughs> to be a mother, thinking about being a mother, thinking about how I'd be a good mother and mm -hmm. being a good mother is what I thought. Mm -hmm. And then it was all very tragic when I got sick and, and then, you know, it was very hard for me to like not be involved, stay involved with my children after I passed mm -hmm. and just want to be around them and my husband all of the time. Mm -hmm. It was hard for me even as I watched them over the years kind of get over their grief, I suppose, of, of me and not miss me every single day and not think of me every single day. And uh, my husband remarried and and my kids kind of, I could feel them uh, be less uh, thinking of me all the time and I just I so find it really hard because I feel like I've felt like they're disloyal to me mm -hmm. I've Can felt you see it was more distressing them not thinking about you than it was think them thinking about you yeah mm -hmm. definitely mm -hmm. um I felt entitled to them thinking about me and I mm -hmm. still do really mm -hmm. I still feel like they're betraying me. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and these emotions are hard to admit to because you then feel like you're being a bad mother. Well, no. <laughs> 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 to be honest, oh, no, I good. feel good. like being good. a good mother, I'm entitled you're to entitled for a certain their good opinion of me. <laughs> so I don't. The part of my issue is that people are still trying to tell me that the way I view motherhood and if they is explain, wrong. They've explained to you that actually this emotion that you've just identified is the emotion that killed you. Yeah, they they try to, mm. <laughs> and that's pretty hard for you to accept. It is much. hard, and one of my daughters uh, now that's has breast cancer. Breast cancer because she's modelled her mother. Yes, and so that was probably the inroad. Yeah. into this issue for me right? because but I haven't then, wanted to know yeah. about it for a long time and yeah. I still don't really want to know. Yeah. Um, but I see her suffering and she's got children and I see them and, of course, I've been very involved with my grandchildren mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and I just... And how's it looking like she's going to pass too, is it? Uh, yeah, mm. but it might not. Might not, but... Yeah. You know, it might not, mm. but... Um, but you worry about that, obviously. Yeah. Mm. But, you know, I, I'm being told continuously that a lot of my motivations are not really about anyone else but me, mm -hmm. and I find that really Real hard, hard. <laughs> to accept. Because mm -hmm. you're almost being, you're being told you're selfish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and really, I feel like I lived a life of the opposite, opposite of, of selfish. selfish. Exactly. Uh, I feel like I taught my daughters not to be selfish, and now I'm being told that she's got the same problem I had, and really we're just self-involved. And honestly, I feel like I'm being insulted. Yeah. yeah. I feel like most days I get insulted, and so, uh, I feel offended. <laughs> mm -hmm. So that feels pretty tough. Yeah, and I feel like, you know, Did you have much of <laughs> other women were bad mothers. Like, I would see them neglect their kids and hmm. be selfish or hit their kids or do all this other stuff that I never did. I was there for every play date. I was there for every musical. I was there for every, everything hmm. that my kids wanted. There was nutritious food. I taught them to look after <laughs> themselves. You know, I did all of this stuff. Yeah. And now I'm being told that I'm the bad mum. And I just, honestly. It's pretty hard to handle. Yeah. yeah. And you don't really believe it. No. No. And people are telling me that I'm angry and I've got to deal with it. And I feel like, you know what? You'd be insulted every day. See if you're not a little bit angry. And why do I have to feel anything? Yeah, I get you. I get you, but I can't agree with you. But anyway, <laughs> I can explain why in a minute. But yeah, it's fantastic that you're honest about it. That's a, that's that's definite improvement over what you were like on Earth, <laughs> not, not being honest about it. <laughs> yeah, I suppose on Earth, I, I just smiled at everything and yeah. tried to be sweetness and light about everything. But I, honestly, I, I did feel like I was doing a pretty good job. <laughs> 
as yeah. a mum. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But highly dependent upon emotional projections coming from children. In other words, what do you mean? Highly dependent upon the good thoughts of others coming towards you. Uh, yeah, probably, and not just my kids. Yeah. Like everyone in so my community, community, yeah. my family, husband, everyone, just thinking children. that I'm a good mum. Exactly. And because I felt like I worked hard to be a good mum. Well, it was they driven, should tell me I'm a good as mom. you as your helpers have probably pointed out. It was driven by some very strong addictions a lot of which weren't even caused by you ironically they were caused by your own upbringing but uh what, what do you mean what well, is you, an, what do you mean by an addiction an addiction is a, like a, a frenzy and if you think about it you're in a frenzy with this whole mother thing it's like the definition of who you are mm. and that's not i know i certainly got tired i got tired a lot of when yeah, I got sick, even, that's the longest I lay down my entire life. Of course. When yeah, I even went and when had you got treatment. Even tired, you never let yourself rest because of the frenzy. No. Can you see? It's like yeah. a frenzy. An I didn't addiction think of it is like a frenzy. That. It's like a, a constant grating on us that we've got to get up and do things, got to get up and do things, got to get up and do this, got to get up and do this. Not ever questioning why. Not ever looking at the underlying emotional reason why we had to get up and do something. You see? Yeah. And in the end, it certainly did cause your, your cancer. The thing that caused your cancer is the strong emotional demand from others that they satisfy your addictions to be a mother. Right. And, that, that, and that's not driven by a pure motivation. You follow? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, I don't really. I mean, no, I don't no, agree no. with you, but I'm listening. I know you don't agree. Yeah. I know you this don't. is what happens to me on a daily basis now. You People come, they tell me stuff. <laughs> I don't agree with them, but I listen. Yeah. Because I, I'm uh, not trying to insult you. <laughs> I'm trying to point out to you why you can't progress beyond where you are. Mm. And, mm. and and like, Remember if I do about something love. about this, yeah. is it going to help my daughter? In, in, immensely. Okay. Immensely. But now she has the emotion inside of her too, and she will have to release the emotion. So you know how your emotion probably came again from your parents, particularly your mother, and and way she lived her life. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. Uh, just, say yeah. what you want to say. Well, no, you're right, but I also kind of had it in my head I'm going to do it better than her yeah yeah and i kind of feel like and i did what? and, and now did... i get what you mean about the judgment of rodney because yeah, i feel it's... like he is being a wimp for feeling stuff and that's how i felt about my mum as well correct so i just became like super woman yes and no like feeling weak and no kind of tears and you know yeah. I'll, i'd look at these other women who like have a baby and then they get all like unkempt and like you go around and they hadn't had a shower and they're just like hanging out with this newborn that was so screaming and unkempt yeah. and i'd just be like get it together is really my feeling i had inside yeah yeah and i would kind of do stuff to try and help them get it together but all the while frustrated that they're not getting it together. Well, yeah, and thinking they're pretty weak, really. Mm hmm Yeah. Yeah. So these are the kind of emotions that are not loving emotions. And yeah. it's And it's not loving emotions that cause us to remain stuck in the spirit world in certain location. But... Okay. What I did for my kids, though... See... Did you do it for the right reason? See, God only looks at character. Well, yeah. I want them to become strong women. Well, you that's know, not I... the right reason. Well, so you... What is? The right reason is for them to, to, to become loving women, to become caring women, to become kind women, but not to become strong women. Strong. See, God created everyone with the same ability to be strong, emotionally strong, but, but your idea of emotional strength is to not feel emotion. Yeah. <laughs> which, is not, which is not God's idea of emotional strength. See, so God's idea of emotional strength is to feel every emotion. Then, see, at the moment, see, you fear emotion. That's the reality. So the reason why I say you were judgmental with Rodney is 
Rodney's afraid about some of his emotions, mm. and so are you. So in a lot of ways, you're in an identical place. Yeah, and I still don't see the benefit. I, you know, I've, I've, I've been privy to this whole discussion, you have. <laughs> yeah. And I don't see the benefit of being emotional. Let's look at I liked, I liked having a house that ran smoothly. I liked being in control of stuff. Like well, that felt you're good. You're making the presumption now that to have a house running smoothly, you have to not be emotional. Yeah. And, and that isn't a presumption. The reality is that it, all the people who are trying to assist you, every one of them has their house in order, far better than you have your house in order right now. And well, yet, it frustrates me that it, my house, I can't get it in order Of now. course you can't. And this is the reason why, because you believe that the way to get it in order is to do it without emotion. Now, if you let the people who are trying to help you project for you a picture of their homes. Yeah. Their house That's the, the kind of house I'd like to have right now. Exactly. But the home in the spirit world is generated by the soul condition. See, I feel like you're telling me my effort is useless and my effort is the only thing, my personal effort in mm -hmm. things is yeah. the only thing that got me anything and anywhere in my life. Yeah, and it was and useless. That's what I'm telling you. See, I just feel like I'm getting insulted every five minutes. Well, no, I'm not insulting you. I'm stating quite clearly, just as your helpers are trying to state, I'm stating quite clearly to you the truth, which is it is useless. It's not a comment about your life. And the reason why you chose to do effort was a lot to do with how your mum brought you up and she, you sort of viewed her as a bit of a wimp. Yeah. Right? And, and your dad was, he, you, you got a lot of your attention from your dad, right? And he, he wanted you to be stronger than your mum. Yeah. You know, strong for the family and so forth. So you got a lot of rewards as a child to be this kind of person. But, but none of it is based upon God's view of what the ideal family relationship is. Yeah, okay. okay. I, like, Does that make sense? Yeah, I'm listening, yeah. and I uh, I don't mean to be rude to you. Like I just, Sorry. it's oh, just, mind. <laughs> it's just that I often feel like everyone's being rude to me. <laughs> um, I, under I understand, kind of, that I have stuff to look at here. Yeah, but and I suppose the good thing about you coming to talk about it is that is that people can see at least how difficult it is sometimes to be told a whole heap of things that you don't personally really agree with and that you don't personally believe were the cause of your problems now or are the cause no. of your problems now. And yet they obviously are very convinced that these things are the cause of your problems. And if it wasn't for my girl... You probably wouldn't be having the discussion, would you? And I, I could care less about any of this. Yeah. But uh, seeing she's now her, you know, in maybe the same situation, uh, ending up in the same way as I did, yeah. and it was only that I felt pretty upset about that, that someone came and started talking to me about this, mm -hmm. that I can even sit here now with you and talk about it mm -hmm. and be more honest about it honest about what i really feel about it yeah. but i uh, it's really hard for me to to see that i feel like i got rewards for the way that i was on earth now i understand what everyone's saying about the cancer <laughs> that that well, see i never thought of that as anything to do with me no. getting the cancer and no, anything to do the way that i live and so... But it is your body that got cancer. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, okay, I see that. <laughs> like, Obviously, it has to have something to do with you, if it is your body that got it. Yeah. I just like to think of it medically yeah. and, you know, yeah, everyone says it's like something beyond your control. And, yeah. and that God made some mistakes somewhere and one of them was we get cancer. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's right, yeah. So, you know, but... I've always been open to, like, rational argument. Mm -hmm. 
it's just that sometimes I feel like can I these make a suggestion? Arguments that get presented to me now. I can entertain them to a point and then I just feel like, mm, uh, Can I make a suggestion about rational out arguments? to get me as well. I don't know if you're that open to rational <laughs> argument, to be honest. And I, can I explain why? I, most people on earth are not open to rational argument. And the reason why is because we have a lot of childhood emotion that's built up with us over the year, formative years of our life that we now believe is true. And any argument that's presented that goes against those emotions from our childhood existence, we don't believe is rational, even when it is. So, yeah. So, can you see how? Yeah. Yeah. This is what something that you're going to have to confront in your future progress is that, is that you've got to come to see at some point that maybe a lot of your arguments are not very rational, but they came from. Uh, an environment in your growing years, in your formative years, in your childhood, mm. that wasn't rational. So, so, how do you actually then have a rational discussion? It's very hard to have a rational discussion unless you're willing to release the emotion. And the emotion you're having at this stage is anger, so you've got to release that. You've got to let yourself go through that. See, I don't even, I don't even want to do what Rodney's doing because I just think no. that there's, shouldn't, there's, there's no need for that kind of behaviour. And this is what I'm saying. In some ways, he's he's a, he's in he's in front of you. He's ahead of you because he's actually I, allowing himself to experience his anger. To me, honestly, and I'm someone who really prized cleanliness while I was on Earth. Mm -hmm. To me, doing what Rodney is even doing now. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Rodney, but. It's like going and rolling in the mud, like, and just hanging out muddy. Like, and, and to this, me, that's just gross. And here's your judgment. Y yeah, that's what. That's why I said earlier, okay, maybe I'm a bit judgmental. Here's your judgment. Yeah. And every time you judge emotion, you're not going to feel it. And every time you don't feel it, you're not going to progress. You can only help your daughter by feeling the emotion letting it go the emotion that drove you to be a mum and the emotion that drove you to do everything for everybody else to your own exhaustion so it's kind of like you're saying to me i have to go through the equivalent of rolling in the mud and sitting in that for the next six months no i'm saying you view it as rolling in the mud which yeah, but the, the, the level the of discomfort I would have with rolling in the mud and then not taking a shower for six months is really what I'm going to have to go through, that level of discomfort. Uh, yeah, but you see, again, you're seeing it as even discomfort. It's your, these are all your judgments. See, you, once you start going through the process, you'll feel relieved. And, and when you feel relieved, you realise, oh, it, it wasn't as bad as what I believed it was going to be. So at this stage, what I'm saying to you is your fears from childhood have caused you now to get into this state where you believe doing what Rodney's doing is bad, right? Kind of gross. Yeah. And gross, right? Yeah. That's how you see it, right? But that's just your belief, mm. right? That's all it is. It's a belief that comes from your life what you need to do is start considering to give up your beliefs. Because remember, before you passed, did you think you you believe in an afterlife? No. No. And yet when you passed, what happened? Yeah. You were in one. So, Thank goodness, because I could still be around my kids. Well, true, but, but uh, probably not a good reason. But anyway, but uh, the... The, be the beauty of that is that it should have helped you see that just because you didn't believe in an afterlife, it didn't mean there wasn't one. Yeah, see? yeah. Okay, I see that, yeah. You see that? Yeah. And just because you didn't believe that your cancer was caused by you, yeah, it doesn't mean that it's not true. Yeah, well, so, yes, and I'm starting to see that, that, okay, maybe I had a part in well, my Well, the more cancer. you're open to seeing that emotionally, the faster you'll progress. The more you're open to seeing that actually your beliefs really don't matter. What matters is what is true. You follow? 
And what mm. you're doing here a lot is you're holding on to your beliefs about what makes a good mother, for example. You're yeah. holding on to your beliefs about what caused your cancer. You're holding on to your beliefs about, you know, what's causing your daughter's cancer. You're holding on to your beliefs about what makes a good parent. You're holding on to your beliefs about what's a good woman in society. Yeah. And what I'm proposing to you is that the more rapidly you can give up these beliefs and see what God believes, the faster your progress. And what your friends are trying to tell, help you with is help you see what God believes. And they're trying to do the same with Rodney, of course. You know, he believes that being a man is, bang, this is what a man's like. Mm. You see? Yeah. And it, Yeah, and okay, I can see Rodney. Thing. Yeah, okay, I see what you're saying. It's you just say. a different matter. Yeah. He, I can see where I think he's wrong about some things. So you're saying, like, it could be that I'm wrong about some things. Yeah, not, yeah. not about something. Yeah. Before you passed, about a lot of things. Yeah, okay. well, before you passed, you didn't even believe there was an afterlife. That's that's a fair bit to be wrong about. <laughs> Do you see? Yeah. Yeah. Right. So is it isn't it fairly highly likely that you're probably fairly wrong about a lot of things? <laughs> probably right. <laughs> it's hard, and I see that I've fairly kind of. I can kind of see that I'm fairly full of myself or arrogant or something. Yeah, um, but I'm, what I'm I... suggesting is, is that most people on earth have a very set li limit to their belief systems. And as you've found just in passing, you've had to confront at least a few of them <laughs> just by passing, right? Yeah. You've already confronted a few of them. What I'm suggesting to you is perhaps there's many more thousands of belief systems that you've held on to, that actually all will be confronted in the future. And if you're willing to confront them, you'll progress faster. Hmm. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, okay. Yeah. And if you stop seeing them as something to do with you, pride in yourself, stop seeing them as that, and you start seeing them as just belief systems that were false, that we, you were taught to have, mm. that you can give up. Obviously, it's going to be an emotional process, but you'll give them up. And if you can see them as that, you won't be so resistive to giving them up, you see? Yeah. Yep. Okay. <laughs> right. I think, I think a lot of what comes up for me when you're talking about this is how much approval I also got from yeah. people around me, yep. including my dad. Yeah. Just... Being the woman. Being like this. Mm -hmm. And my husband mm -hmm. and all the other women looked up to me. And mm -hmm. it's kind of difficult for me to say, I'm wrong. They were all wrong. You were addicted to it is what I'm suggesting. Yeah. That's what I'm suggesting. And, and it's, you were addicted to it because right back in your childhood, the addictions were created and they were never released. Right okay. back in your childhood. Okay. Your dad and your mum between them and your experience of dad and mum caused you to now believe that this is what it's like to be the superior woman. Do you follow? Mm. And the superior woman will do this. <clears throat> and the superior woman, because she's superior, should get all this adulation mm. from the people around her because she is superior. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And not, I'm not saying that to insult you. I'm saying that to show you that these belief systems were set up in your childhood somewhere. So by the time you're an adult, you didn't even think about them. You just did them. In a yeah. lot of ways, you were like a person on like a robot. Hmm. Without very much consideration to the health of others or yourself, to be honest. Yeah, and I mean, that's difficult to hear that your whole life you're just a robot. Like, man, yeah, that's, that's challenging is. for yeah, me when you say that. And it's challenging for me when I can't get my house clean here. Mm -hmm. And it's challenge like there's a lot of challenges. And but I understand. You, you will find when you clean up the soul-based issues, 
which all come from this childhood experience that you then acted upon as an adult, your house will naturally get clean. And that will be one of the side benefits of making the, making the changes. But see, I like that it's my effort that gets the house clean. And there's the addiction. Yeah. You want it to be your effort. You want to earn it. You want to... You, do you see what I'm saying? You want yeah, to look, I've just... I've probably got to go, but yeah. Mm-hmm. I... Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, I'll take it under advisement. No worries. <laughs> That's all a person can ask. But Suzanne, what I'd like to compliment you about is being honest. Because you've been very honest about how you feel. And that's what we're trying to illustrate to people here on Earth, you see. Honestly, I find this bit, like being dishonest, that's not so hard for me. Doing the thing that Rodney's doing. That's even more difficult to be that honest. And can you see again, he's probably in front of you then because he's at least doing things that... Yeah, I'm yet to see. I'm yet to, I'd like to have someone, like, prove to me that what he's doing is actually going to... Like, if I did that, it's going to help my daughter, for example. Very soon. That... Very easy to do that. Would you like it? No. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't really want to? Well, what, what, how, how are you going to prove it to me? I it's very simple. Very simple. Well, well, who are the people who are helping you? What's their names? There's a bunch of them. Yeah? What's the ones who help well, you? Nancy is the one that helps me the most. Okay, so Nancy. Nancy's going to show you a picture of her life on Earth. Mm. What was it like? Yeah, pretty. Pretty much the same as yours, right? Different time frame. Different time frame. Same. Same life. Yeah. Yeah? Now, Nancy's going to show you a picture of her house now and her life now. <laughs> So good. Now, ask Nancy, how did she go from one to the other? Yeah, okay, that's that's motivation. Yeah. How did Nancy die? Yeah, yeah. She got sick and died. Mm-hmm. And it's run through her family. Mm-hmm. And Same she's... as yours. Mm-hmm. You see, can you see that you didn't even want to ask Nancy why it is no, that she's even qualified to even it. tell you <laughs> about these matters? But surely she is qualified since she's had the very experience that she's trying to help you avoid. Yeah, that got my attention. Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know. I'm gonna go. I don't want to be emotional, okay, around you. Okay. I'm just going to go. I'm okay with you being emotional, as you know. But, uh, but I'm happy for you to leave whenever you wish. But thanks for coming and talking to us. Okay. I'll probably be back sometime that's okay. to thank you properly because it's hard now. Yeah, no, that's know. all right. But just bear in mind that Nancy's been what you through, you've been through, what you've been through. You can trust her. Yeah? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. Okay.